Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice and if this is your first time here, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and head over to Facebook and check out the Craftable Things community group on Facebook. Y'all, so today's video, I wanted to make a bling shirt and we did make a bling shirt and it's absolutely adorable. However, it was a whole hot mess getting to the blink. So we are about to just dive right into this video. I don't know if you'll learn much. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but I don't want this video to discourage anybody from getting into using hot fix rhinestones because I had a little situation. <music> Okay, y'all, so before we get started with this project, we need to select our image or our rhinestone template. And we are getting a rhinestone template from Etsy. And this particular template is courtesy of Making with Marilyn. This is her Etsy shop, Marilyn's Merch. And we are just going to go ahead and select this particular file. And purchase it so that we can cut this out with our Cricut Maker. Now we are inside of Cricut Design Space and it's time for us to upload our template and we are just going to select Upload Image, Browse. And so with Marilyn's file, she has the size that the template should be listed with the file name. Also in Etsy, in the description, it tells you the exact size that it should be because sometimes when you upload, files like this inside of Cricut Design Space, it may not always come over the correct size. Okay y'all, so now we have our image and I'm just going to reduce it so that it can all fit on one screen. I am not reducing the actual image. I am just clicking in the bottom left corner and reducing the screen size. All right, so once I select everything, it tells me that the width is 11. 0.112 by 10.123 and based on her description it should be 11.111 but I'm not really going to change it I'm going to leave it like that because it's pretty much the exact size so let's get ready and I'm going to head over to make it all right and so we will be cutting our material which will be using rhinestone flock from heat transfer warehouse we will be using the mat and we are going to select continue and so everything is as it should be so now i am just going to select continue and we are going to select the machine that we'll be using and we are using the cricut maker 3 so the material that we're going to be using today is rhinestone flock from heat transfer warehouse and you have to add the material into Cricut design space and so to do that I am going to head up to browse all materials then select material settings once you select material settings you're going to scroll all the way down and then you want to add a new material so click on to add new material. And so the new material, I already have a rhinestone flock uh, material that I added, but I'll go ahead and do rhinestone flock two, three, four, because I probably have several. So let's go ahead and click save. And so once you click save, you will need to adjust the pressure. And so we are going to move 175 all the way over to 340. And that is just telling your machine what type of pressure to use for the flock. And you're going to leave everything else the same. It's only gonna need one pass and you are going to be using the fine point blade with this. And so we are going to click save. And so now we have a rhinestone flock two, three, four. All right. So to get out of here, we're just going to scroll all the way back up and get out of there. All right. And so once you're ready to select your rhinestone flock, you will go back in and you will type in rhinestone 
flock and there is the one that we just added. So I'm just going to go ahead and select rhinestone flock and we are going to get ready to head over to the machine. So now it's time to load our mat and we need to put the rhinestone flock onto our cutting board. We're going to be using a standard grip cutting mat and I am going to leave the backing on the back. So for this cut, I am going to leave the backing on. A lot of times I take the backing off and I just stick the rhinestone flock to the cutting mat, but we're not gonna do that today. We're going to just finish this down really well. And hopefully all of those dots or holes that gets cut out will stick to the backing. So our machine is ready and I'm going to just slide this in and we're going to get ready to load it. Now we can get ready and press go. Okay, so I thought the machine was cutting perfect, but then it stopped in the middle of the cut and I didn't want to waste the flock, so I put it back through a second time to cut and so it did cut twice. So this is what we get. <laughs> so it ended up cutting through the backing because I did place it through again. And so when I took it off, of course, we had some clean holes on that backing. And I'm really curious to see if I can actually brush in my stones into the backing now. But nonetheless, this is what we have, a complete disaster with this flock. And so now I'm going to have to try to get all of those holes out of the flock. As you see that bottom part where the machine did not originally cut, that pretty much cut out perfectly. And that stayed onto the backing. So yeah our cricket stopped on us nonetheless i started taking them out one by one and then i was just like you know what this is going to be way too much and so what i did next i heard of a trick from making with Marilyn as far as removing the holes when they don't come off of the flock and instead of placing them on the table or placing the flock on the table and peeling it off the table, I couldn't do that because the backing was actually still on each of those holes. I used a lint brush to kind of help me get those small holes off of the flock so that we could still use this template. Of course, I don't want to waste any flock because flock is not cheap and when done correctly, you can reuse it over and over and over again. So now I'm just going through and trying to remove as many of those holes as I can with the lint brush and that actually worked pretty well. It worked pretty well. Now it's time to brush the rhinestones into the template and I will be using a chopping mat from the Dollar Tree as my base to stick the template onto it. This makes it reusable and I love getting these chopping mats from the Dollar Tree for this purpose. Alright, so I'm just going to make sure that I press this into the chopping mat to make sure it's nice and flat so no rhinestones can get underneath. I will be taking this brush and you can find this brush inside of Home Depot or I will have a link listed below to this exact brush from Heat Transfer Warehouse. But I am just brushing these stones into the template. I will be using different colors for each of the letters so I'm trying to do this very controlled so that I don't get rhinestones all over the place and in those holes that I don't want them to be into. So a few holes to get into the R and I'm just going to use my rhinestone picker tool to move those over into the T into places where I did not get rhinestones into the T. Now I'm going to continue this for each of the letters, just brushing them into each of the letters. The rhinestones I'm using, these came from the Baby's Booties Neon Treasure Trove collection and a link will be listed below in the description. These rhinestones actually have a glow to them uh, when you look at them with the UV light and they're absolutely beautiful.
done, it's time for us to transfer this. And we will be using this hot fix transfer tape from Heat Transfer Warehouse. And to apply it, you just kind of want to curve it in a U shape or taco shape and kind of place it down and let it fall onto your transfer. And that way you will be able to pick those stones up. I'm using my fingers just to get every part of those rhinestones or this template to touch the hot fix transfer tape. I find that this is easier and that my rhinestones really stick to the transfer tape as we need it to. Now it's time to peel up that transfer tape and you want to do it very slowly and be careful because you don't want any of those stones to pop off of it and I'm just holding the template down to make sure that everything is pretty stable as I complete this process but as I'm looking everything looks pretty good I am going to flip it over I want to check the back just to make sure that all those rhinestones are down that there are no double rhinestones or overlapping rhinestones and from what I can tell it looks great so now it's time for me to go ahead and place the backing back onto that transfer tape and you want to do this just to protect your stones just to make sure that no lint or anything gets on that adhesive on the back of your stones and everything looks perfect. Okay y'all so let's get ready to press our rhinestones and first we want to lint roll the shirt and then we are going to pre-press the shirt for a few seconds to get any moisture out of the shirt and so we are just going to line our design up so now we're getting ready to press this and we are pressing this at 325 degrees for 25 seconds. We're all done and now it's time to remove the transfer tape and these rhinestones require a warm peel so you can go ahead and peel those a few seconds after it is done pressing. All right, so I love these colors together. I love how this looks. Looks very Halloweenish. And these colors, not the white ones, they kind of illuminate with UV light. Looks like they glow in the dark. See, the white doesn't do that. So when you put the light on the white, that white does not care. <laughs> But the other colors, they shine bright. All right, so we're all done with our neon trigger treat shirt, and it looks cute. All right, y'all. So that is it, and our shirt, despite all of the hiccups, our shirt came out super cute and adorable. I absolutely love this shirt. Shout out to Marilyn for this amazing design. A link will be listed in the description to Marilyn's Etsy shop where if you want to make this design, you can. Also, a link to the baby's booties rhinestone store will be linked there as well. Every month she has a buy-in for hot fix rhinestones and she has so many different colors i'm not sure if she still has these colors in her inventory but y'all these colors are gorgeous and they are perfect for the season if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up also make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber in addition head over to facebook instagram and tiktok and join craftable things there as well but that's it for today y'all Thanks for sticking around for this hot mess video. Until next time.